Oh man, I am so happy to be here. Uh, I just want to briefly say, contrary to what the brochure says, I don't eat bugs for breakfast. <laughs> it's actually flesh eating, not eating flesh, but eh, that's all right, no worries. <laughs> so happy you're all here. All right, so uh, it's a kind of odd story, but let's begin. So, parasites are hitchhikers. Wherever we go, so do they, hidden within our very own cells. It's kind of hard to think of, and it's a little scary, but they can kind of live within us, and we might not even know they're there. And um, increased travel has led many of us to contract these diseases at increasing rates. And unfortunately for me, I'm a living example of this issue. Um, after traveling to Panama last year, um, I and five others got a rare flesh-eating disease, um, and we brought it to the States. Uh, and yeah, you're like, all right, I better get out of here before I contract it too, but don't worry, it's not contagious, so stay in your seats. <laughs> um, uh, and um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit today about why this happened and why the Centers for Disease Control actually was on my case. <sighs> Ooh, <laughs> little grody, X-rated film. Um, so one, <laughs> one sandfly bite uh, cost me $85,000. Um, and it was a disaster, a year and a half worth of suffering, and um, just the medical inequality that sort of results from this disease is kind of shocking. There are a lot, in fact, of indigenous peoples who have suffered with this disease for centuries, and just, I bet none of you even knew that it existed. Um, and it's kind of shocking what one fly can do to a body. And this disease is called cutaneous leishmaniasis, you know, like, oh, cutaneous, what does that even mean? It's a little, a little too fancy. I, it took me a while to figure this out. Apparently, cutaneous is skin, and leishmaniasis is the protozoa, the parasite, which was in me. Leishmania, to be exact, is the name of those little squiggly things that were in my blood. Uh, so I got to name them all. Uh, it was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> so, so what exactly happened to me, and how did a sandfly bite cause such a horrible incident? Well. This little thing, this little booger, this female sandfly bit me when I was hallucinating in the Panamanian forest. I took malaria pills for the first time and they kind of made me a little crazy. I'm already a little crazy, so that kind of elevated it to this point of, oh boy. So uh, <laughs> I was seeing like armadillos in the air and like witches and, and I remember I was walking in the forest and I just did not know where I was. Like, am I in a forest or am I at a beach relaxing? And I was just laying in the dirt, just laying there, like, like a little pig, like, oh, yes. So, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's not, not a good idea in a primary forest where it's very diverse in their species and in their bugs. Um, just a quick side note, the Bushmaster, the top 10 deadliest snake in the world, is there. So I'm glad I didn't run into one of those. <laughs> um, so yes, the sandfly bit me in the middle of the night that day. And it went into my bloodstream. And the protozoa actually went into my white blood cells. And you think, great, my immune system is working. It's engulfing the parasites. I'm going to be healthy. Actually, no. It helped spread the parasite even further throughout my body. And it's this crazy little mechanism that this little evil thing does where it goes inside your white blood cells, it replicates, and then it bursts all your cells. Like It's a party, confetti, bursting cell, bursting cell, bursting cell. I'm so happy, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're happy, I'm not happy. Um, and unfortunately, this disease can kill you. It can spread to your mucosal membrane. You might lose a nose in the middle of that situation, uh, so I'm glad I have this nose. Um, and it can get even worse. It can go into your stomach lining and eat away your stomach. Um, I'm glad I had a full meal today because that would have turned up my stomach a little bit if I said that to you guys. But anyway, so um, these incidences are unfortunately a part of this disease. And luckily for me, though, I got cured beforehand. And before I go into my treatment, I'd like to just briefly say why this disease even exists in Panama. Well, I was in the Tumbes Choco Magdalena <laughs> Ecological Hotspot, which is a region, one of the top 20 ecological hotspots on the globe. And it's very diverse. And you think, 
okay, that's good, it is good. The issue though is the deforestation in the area I was in. And so with deforestation comes a proliferation of these sand flies because they love the loose dirt, the dry soil, the degraded land. They live off of that. They don't want those beautiful trees. They don't want those nice bushes. They love the dirt that like a pig, like I was rolling in it. So <laughs> that's exactly where they go. And so the issue, oops, the issue is 900,000 to 1.3 million people get this disease per year. And I bet like none of you probably knew about it. Of course, I did not know about it until I contracted it. And it's, it's shocking the amount of indigenous peoples who are basically silent um, in Afghanistan, in Sudan, and even in Costa Rica, Panama, of course, um, in Brazil, uh, in Belize, it's everywhere. And it's, when I was looking at the map, um, I was just especially shocked by the nice gray, which is the US. And apparently, there are fewer than 1,000 cases of this disease in the US. And I'm one of those cases. <laughs> and it's kind of like, I'm special, but in a bad way. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> alrighty then. So, what was my treatment? Um, I went through three different treatments, kind of like Goldilocks. First one, no. Second one, even worse. Third one, victory. So I'm happy I had that story to keep me going. <laughs> so first one, miltefacine. This pill is kind of gnarly. Each box costs around $22,000. So uh, I basically spent approximately 85K just on that one thing. The other two are free. Um, yay, I guess, haha. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, so this first one, miltefacine. It causes extreme nausea because you're basically taking pills three times a day, every day, and your body's just not used to all those chemicals in it. It's just not a good situation. I ate a lot of lentils. Don't give me lentils ever again. I'm so sick of lentils. Um, <laughs> next off, I took thermotherapy. And thermotherapy is an odd little thing. What it does is it actually burns your skin cells off. <laughs> so it kind of microwaves you a little bit to a toasty, 170 degrees, um, and it, it burns just a little bit. They, they do numb it, but it does still burn. And you know, the doctors, they say, oh, how do you feel? You know, you're not gonna say, this is the worst day of my life. You're gonna say, great, because uh, you know, they're trying to help you and they're doing the best they can. And so the third one, pentastam, the evil pentastam, but it worked. Uh, it's a chemotherapy actually. And the way this drug works is it basically, you know, kills all the cells in sight, even the healthy ones. Um, and I got it inserted, injected in me uh, for like about a month and a half. Um, I missed all of winter break. Maybe you all were relaxing on the beach. I missed out on that, but it's okay. I'm, I'm so happy now, I'm so healthy. Um, and it was worth it. Um, and yes, daily I was in the oncology clinic and I met a lot of people who had cancers. Um, and I actually got to know a few sort of in passing. And, you know, it helped fortify this new kind of methodology of life, which I'd like to get into just a little later. So now you may be wondering, this 85K number is still confusing you. It's actually a basic economic principle which requires this sort of cost differential. And so the U.S. has to pay for those in poor nations that can't afford it. They are covering the costs because it's just the way it is. The U.S. has more money. We're the wealthier nation. Of course, we're going to cover those poor people who can't afford it. Um, and they're not covered by insurance, most, in these indigenous tribes, like the Kuna people in Panama. They don't have insurance, so we have to help them. And this is evident in the negotiated price by the World Health Organization versus the private price that we all pay. So for miltefacine, it's approximately $70. And um, that's good for the World Health Organization. That's like a pretty efficient number. And then for the private price, it's around $115. Um, and so that's, you know, not bad. And pentastam, there's a pretty big difference. It's a nice price ceiling, uh, which pentastam has a lower price there of around $7 versus 80 bucks. Um, though, as some of you may know, and as we all took Econ 1 probably, price ceilings cost a big, cause a big shortage um, in the drug. And additionally, there's only one distributor for each of these drugs. So they can kind of control the whole market. Um, they can do what they want. And not many people 
purchase these drugs, so that's the big issue here with pricing. And also, you may be wondering, okay, so me versus 1,200 Panamanian people, why did I put that up there? Well, $85,000 versus approximately $70. If you kind of do the math, that's 1,200 times. So you could either pay for me or pay for 1,200 people in Panama or somewhere else. And it's, to me, it's, it's pretty shocking what you know, this US system will do for one little girl who uh, happens to be in California. <laughs> and so now you might be wondering, was this trip even worth it? Like, should I have even gone? And I think it was 100% worth it. You might think, oh, she's still crazy on those pills. She probably doesn't really mean this, right? Um, but no, I mean this. It was, it was such a good experience. I met Ulysses, Ulisa over there. We're still friends on Facebook. We chat all the time. She says, oh, como estas? Like, how are the chitras? They're little bugs, the sandflies, because I told her the story. <laughs> and she said, yeah, my whole family got that, but we're all fine, because we're so used to it. Like, it's just a part of our lives. And it, it was such a big deal to me. I thought, oh boy, well, I'm glad someone's, you know, so positive about it. And it, it really impacted my sort of world mindset and the whole idea of travel and cultural exchange. And, you know, I still think there's, really high value in cultural exchange. Um, I think we all grow as individuals the more we travel, the more we see. Um, and I think suffering is in, innate in that experience. There's gotta be a little bit. I'm not saying to the point where you're in the hospital for a month and a half, but um, I think it's very key to really valuing a culture and experience. You, it can't all, all be roses and you know candy. Um, and I also learned something pretty, I don't know, it kind of stuck with me about health and, and wellness. And um, I kind of learned that it's important to value health. Like I know we're all stressed week eight, like, oh my God, homework and tests and midterm, not midterms, well, some people, but um, like final exams. And we're, we're all so worried and so individual and stuck in our little ruts. But you know, like you, you, you were here, you got up here, you were able to walk into this room and sit down and listen to me. Um, you ate something today probably that wasn't lentils. Um, <laughs> uh, and you all are healthy human bodies and you're all here with me. And um, that is just a great thing. Just cherish that you're here right now. Um, thank you for listening and sorry for the clicker. <laughs> Have a good one, thank you.